Hello and welcome to another feedback show. I'm Stephen Bradley. And I'm Colin Bradley. And this is the YouTube broadcast. We're going out live. Um, so hello to everyone as you join us. If you're watching the replay back, then hello as well. This is the show where we talk about your artwork sent in to us by you, our members. Uh, it's a bonus to the membership that we have on colinbradleyart.com. So it's a bit exclusive. You're in a little exclusive club when you join the membership. And one of the perks is that you can send in your work to us and we'll talk about it on this show. We broadcast every other week on a Wednesday night, 7 p.m. GMT. We're a little bit early today. Just give um, viewers a chance to to join us. Uh, how is it going, Dad? Uh, very well, Steve. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, in good health, good. I'm happy to say, and uh, my uh, hand is performing very well with my artwork, <laughs> I've got to say. <laughs> I've produced some really good stuff at the moment, really enjoying it. Yeah, we, I, you just sent me over a new picture that you I got. did, yes. yes. Great. That was lovely, wasn't it? That, that, uh, I've been requested to do that. I remember, can't remember when it was, some while ago, I, I was requested to do this subject. Uh, by somebody, and uh, I, I, I made an excuse for not doing it then, <laughs> but I couldn't, I couldn't resist this. I found this, uh, and I thought this is a this is a showstopper. Not, it wasn't easy. It looks easy, but it wasn't. But it's a great one. And when they eventually see that, I think they're going to go uh, a bundle on it. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, really good. It's what is nice is. We're finding, or I'm finding, um, I want challenges now. You know, I want to challenge myself. I don't want to keep churning out the same old thing, although the same old thing, I'm sure, would be very welcome. But I like to challenge myself. And in doing so, of course, I'm challenging uh, all our members too, yeah, which is good. Sure. It's good to see. And the feedback show, and I've seen the, the, the things that we're going to be showing today, or the pictures, and people are doing a great job now, i've got to tell you right from the beginning when you see and everybody sees what's being presented here today it's hard to believe that uh, this is an amateur you know uh, show it, it, it could well be in fact one of the pictures i won't say which one but one of the pictures i, I when you put mine alongside it i had to work out which was mine <laughs> now that that is something. a compliment. That is a compliment. It, it is, isn't it? it? When that happens, you think, wow, that is good. I mean, I, I did work it out, but, you know, I, it, when it, it, it's, you're facing something like that, and you think, wow, now that does mean that we're getting, we're getting through. And yeah, uh, people definitely. are finding it. And they must be loving it. They must be loving it all. Yeah, I think so. I'm going to just jump ahead because before we get onto the artwork there was this question that was sent in to us and i thought that was probably a good place to start actually yeah uh, irene sent this question in and we covered it but then you mentioned that it might be a good one for the show so uh irene says as you can see on screen i've been told that the best way to approach a pastel painting is to cover the subject matter in white before adding color is this so and if so why um, well i mean sure most people now know that that's not the right way to go about it if you put white or any light color onto your pastel paper and you try to add dark colors to it for instance you're going to make them wishy-washy as people have found out so you can't do that no that that's not on however i think this is possibly applying although i wouldn't do this to pastel we're talking about pastel soft pastel um again i wouldn't do it but maybe somebody has found a way of doing that because soft pastel has a much higher pigmentation so therefore it would go on top of white although if you think about it it's going to mix with it isn't it whatever you put on top it's going to mix with it so when you yeah. when you're working on watercolor and oil and other other mediums you add white to a color to brighten it or lighten it up so that's what's going to happen if you start doing that so the answer really is a, a resounding no you wouldn't do that and uh, so that's the reason. I've given the reason why as well there. Okay, that's good. That's good. Yeah, I mean, I, a lot of the people that already know mm. how the past pencils work would, would know the answer to that. But it's good for people that, uh, yes, that are just coming into the medium mm. um, that have been told that from, from other, other It's a good teachers. question, though. And, and we, we welcome these, these questions. 
and because they they prompt me into saying hey folks i wonder if any of you would think of doing that if mm. so don't yeah, well, we wrote an article in response to this, actually, and posted it on our blog. So you can mm. go to colinbradleyart.com mm. and hit the blog and find a, find a more detailed answer. But that's, that's it, yeah. Okay, let's dive into some feedback. First one comes from Bonnie. Now, uh, I can't remember which one. I'll try and find out why. So you look at this picture. Um, what it was, who it was by, I can't remember. I should have written that down. Well, it's, uh, whoever it's by, it's a lovely picture. Uh, I love it. I, it's very impressionistic, you know, and you know me and the impressionism go together very well at the moment. However, I have said on many occasions, impressionism is a really difficult act to follow. If you try to copy that, it's hard, really hard, as Bonnie has found out. I think it's a Renoir. I think, I think it's a Renoir. It says Renoir in the top as well. Yeah. Um, a couple of things, though, that, that I would like to point out. First of all, very well done in terms of trying to emulate what you see. But there's a couple of things that stand out for me. One is the eyes are, are too large right. on Bonnie's picture. Now, this is critical. It's so easy to get caught in the trap of saying, I don't need to use square drawing, not for something like this, you know, because it's an impressionist picture. Renoir didn't use square drawing, I'm sure although we don't know that for sure, he may well have done. But whatever Renoir would have done to start off with, he would have proportioned right before he starts. You can't just go willy-nilly, oh, I'm going to draw this picture. You have to have some kind of plan. And uh, if not square drawing, it would be proportioned out. So if you look at the eyes on uh, Bonnie's picture, you'll see that they are quite a lot too large. Therefore, that's one thing that, needs to be addressed now you can't really do anything about it now that's you know if you try rubbing it all out it wouldn't work the other thing steve is if you look at the shoulders above the shoulders now on the picture uh, on the left the actual picture of Renoir's picture would shows a, like a, a, a movie white movie um, halo yeah above her shoulder I don't un quite understand why that was put there. I can't see any reason why Renoir should have done that. Uh, so uh, bad marks for him there, because that would have looked better had he not done it. Anyway, I can't... Uh, I can't. <laughs> you can't critique Renoir. <laughs> no, no, well, yeah, well, I would. I, yeah. I'd pull him up over that, because there is no reason for it. There's no logic to it. But unfortunately, Bonnie's followed suit, but not only followed suit, but made it worse. You mm. see what I mean? Yeah, I see. So anyway, th these are things that are quite important to see and understand and think, you know, what went through his mind when he was doing that. Uh, but still, ever so good. Keep it, keep it going. Keep it, keep trying because that, I love that kind of work. As you know, we, we only had ever done one, haven't I? Yeah, the girl, yeah. The girl in the red hair. I can't remember what it was called now. Holding anyway. a bouquet. Oh, that's right. Yes, yes. Yeah, and yeah. I love doing that, and I well, really it, would love to do more of it. It's good to branch out, you see, isn't it? And test Very yourself so. with the. And I think it's yeah. the ultimate test to, to go into some when you're going from realism to impressionism is yes, really it's, challenging. It's very hard. It, it, it's one of the hardest things. So, full marks to Bonnie for that, mm. giving it a go. Excellent. So moving down, this famous dash and <laughs> <laughs> that we keep seeing from John. Uh, he, we did say send it, send it in to us when he's when it's done, and he did. And uh, here you go. He he says in his message that he shied away from the doing the ribbons, as we mentioned <laughs> on yes, the, the last that. time. <laughs> um, and uh, obviously, the drawing the dog alone provided enough of a challenge. Um, so That's good. No. Yeah. So we thought we'd show the finished result. Well, it, well done. It, it made a big difference, didn't it? And um, he's done a very good job of it too. Uh, considering you couldn't see the nose terribly well on, on the photograph, he's actually done a really good job of that. Yes. Excellent. Yeah. I, I do, I wish he or people would put backgrounds on. Yeah. When you look at that and you think, it doesn't need it. Uh, it does a bit. Yeah. Even if you'd just done a very light shaded background, it would have been just a little bit better. What that, would, but that, I understand why people don't do it, though. What what kind of colour would you put for that? 
Batman. Well, I'd start with a grey. I mean, it's. I think it's probably on white paper. Looking at it, it looks like on white paper, which is something I don't really recommend anyway, uh, because the white becomes too stark. But or it might be on a light grey, actually, Steve. Yeah, I think it is. At yeah. it there, because the white of the muzzle uh, under the nose, you know, and the, in the mouth, that looks very white compared with the paper. So I think it's probably a very light grey. It's very difficult when a photograph because you can't really appreciate it. So if it's a light grey, that's not so bad. But I would have I would have put a grey on simply because then into that grey you can add uh, the ochres maybe a little bit. The eye colour is very good, and I would put some some of that colour in it as well. Mm. But very good. I mean. Would you, put, would, you put put gray, would you put grey onto grey paper because yes, you, need that, you need that base colour to soften? Yes, that colour yes exactly, top. because if you don't put the grey on the grey paper, you haven't got any base, have you, to work mm. your colours into? I, I kind or of, you, the other one you could use, though, if you didn't like the idea of that, you could put ivory on. Yes. And then into the ivory, you could still put the same colours. Yeah. Yeah, I did. I think I kind of knew that answer, but I thought I'd just show yeah, it, no, just to share to, that anyway. For... It's good. To, it, you've got to put a base color, whatever happens. You know, otherwise, you're not going to get uh, the richer colors, the mm. ochres and the burnt sienna, I imagine, has been used there quite a lot. Yeah. And if you tried to put that in on the raw paper, it would look awful. So you've got to have something to work into. Yeah. Very good, though. Brilliant. The, there is one tiny little criticism, though, but it is only a tiny one. The eye on the right-hand side is not quite... Uh, the, the dark colour in the eye is slightly off there. Ah, just slightly. Just here. You see what I mean? If you look at, look at the one on the right, the photograph, yeah, the, it looks more central in the photograph. Um, so I yeah, suspect yeah. that that might be... Uh, something that John could actually alter that it wouldn't be difficult to do that just make it if if you're in any doubt when you do something like this make it a bit vague you know yeah. what I mean by being vague don't make it so obvious that one is used a light sort of halo around the pupil which is highlighted oh, I see yeah 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 I see had he not done that had he merged the color uh, above that halo it would be less obvious. Color, it wouldn't have shown up so much. Got yeah, good little tip that. Mm. Good little tip. Yes, when in doubt, you know, do something that uh, is uh, a little bit vague. <laughs> good one. Good one. I do it all the time. All the yeah. time. Yeah. yeah. You never see it, but I do. <laughs> Fantastic. Well done, John. Got a few paintings here from Paul, so we'll we'll uh, go through some of these. He's done the back nude to start off with. Um, let's talk about that. Uh, well, I like I like it. I, I like that. I like the change of colour. It's, it's nice to see it slightly change of colour. The only criticism I would have that is the hair. Now, hair is a nightmare, as everybody who tries it knows, and it becomes really hard to do. Um, why? I don't know why. It, I've never had a problem with it, but so I can't really come from an amateur point of view. But I know hair is hard from my classes and uh, people that have sent me work. It's very hard to do. I made that one as simple as I could. Yeah. And you see, what's happened is you tend to lose the light, which is what happened uh, on that one. You've lost ah, the light. Oh, yeah, yeah. And if you were to really, you possibly could even use a little bit of putty rubber just to lift some of the light out of that, and that would have made a big difference. If you haven't got a putty rubber, but you've got a double-ended razor, you could use the double-ended, the uh, soft end of the double-ended razor lightly to re relieve some of the pastel. And then put the white, I, I think I use white there, just a little bit of white back in. Yeah. Oh, good point. Yeah, that's a good note. But otherwise, no, I like it very much. And I think uh, it's, it, 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 as I say, it's nice to see a different colour. Yeah. Moving on to Paul's uh, pen and ink watercolour pencil picture. It's nice to see uh, see someone try yeah. the watercolour pencil project yes. Uh, yes. and send it in to us. Well, it's very good. I, I suspect here we have a, a slight problem in a definition, the, the colour. I think Paul's picture looked more like mine in, in terms of colour. You know, yeah. It tends to be a bit dull. Yes, yeah, I think it's a photograph. 
yeah, when you photograph it. Scanning is better than photograph, really. You, yeah. You've got a better result. So assuming that it would have been, then I think you've done very well. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed that. It's good fun. Lovely picture, yeah. And I don't, I can't really criticize it. It's, 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 it's good. It's not real. This is the thing. It was never meant to be. It's, uh, uh, I wouldn't say an impressionist picture, but it's, uh, it's a picture that it's has got uh, a, almost a cartoon look about it. Yeah. And that was, that was intentional. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. The clouds give you, give it away, don't it? <laughs> Just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> These are some more from Paul. These are the, the free courses actually we have available on YouTube, the Harbour Landscape and the Sunset. Well, I tell you what I do love. Um, the Harbour is great. A uh, little bit, went a little bit mad with the grey on the clouds there. Um, I, I, that would have been better had he not put the grey in. Okay, yeah. But otherwise, very good. Water's good. But what I do like is the Sunset. Look at the way he's got that water mirror finish in the water. Yeah, that's that is really good. That's uh, a double-ended razor, isn't it? Uh, not a double-ended razor. A color shaper it looks like a color shaper. Yes, <laughs> yes. It's it's something. It's probably. I wouldn't have done it like that because you very very rarely find open water to be that that smooth. You you find a pond maybe, you know, or water that is in the lake you sometimes can get that but it's very rare you get open water with no ripples or yeah. very little uh, movement in it but none nonetheless i'm not knocking it it's very good yeah very good technique uh, definitely fantastic okay moving on to the next one this is from maggie this is the indian chief one of the more toughest projects that we've had on the uh, membership site you wouldn't believe it if you saw that would you that it was a tough project <laughs> we've had some really good versions of this haven't we yeah it's really really well done um exceptionally well done on the face that i know how hard that is to do and uh i think maggie would have spent quite a bit of time on that looking at it yeah it looks really like good. a lot of time's been taken over Not a lot tools. i can say that maybe the, the feathers are great the feathers are wonderful coming out of the uh that sort of um I don't know whether that headband. Yeah. Um, really good. I, I really feel that that is a, a, a very commendable picture. Yeah. Not a lot well, to say, really. <laughs> so. I know. I, and I wouldn't, uh, all I would say to Maggie is keep it up. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. And that is, it, that is, a, would look really nice as an exhibition piece if she ever gets around to, to uh, exhibiting it. So yeah, you get a really, really lot of co good comments on that. Mm, I agree with you. I agree. Okay, good. Oh, we'll move on then. Um, this came from Wendy. Sent us an email. Uh, the barn owl was the project, uh -huh. and then we'll get onto this. So let's talk about the barn owl first. Okay. Uh, well, the the again, this is a hard. The feathers on the barn owl are really hard. We've had many people try that and have failed failed with the feather so well done on the feathers the eyes need adjusting though what's happened in the light in the eye uh, the one on the right of Wendy's picture is okay yeah leave that alone it's the other one that's slightly off off it's first of all it's too large it needs to be uh, raised a little bit if you look at mine you'll see where my light is on mine and it's a little bit too obvious so uh, okay. I would say um, redo that eye slightly, not the whole eye, just the light. Just try to pinpoint the light as I've got it in mine. Yes. It yeah. probably would be better to fill that in with pastel, the, the, the browns, and then remove a tiny bit of it if you've got a pencil eraser, and then re, uh, reapply the white. And that would have... Uh, after all, that is not a bright white, and it was never meant to be. So it wouldn't really affect it too much if you put if you if you just lightly erase it and put a bit of white in. Yeah, it would look better. It does at the moment spoil the picture. I think. Mm. Where it's, it is at it's, the moment. Again, it's like the other picture you said. You, your attention's drawn to it, isn't it? So That's right. Again, if you can just sort of just add a you know put a little bit in it to draw your attention 
mm. to mm. you know to not mm. to that section and you won't see it no and i think i think uh, it would make a big difference too there the other the other point that uh, i would like to raise with with all of these pictures that uh, of mine they're basically what happens is the artist doesn't see the light the shadowing very well if they see it they don't uh, put it in and it's a fearful way because when you start putting grays into the dark color especially that gray and that brown which we use for that as a, a shading area it does scare you a bit but it's worth trying it because without it you get a flat picture mm. i always think of these as as being uh, as though they've been ironed they're, they've got no they're flat yeah and, and this happens when you lose the dimension uh, through the shading yeah critically important the shading so i would say there if um wendy would like to get her gray out again and uh, uh the brown i think there's a gray and the brown with those two colors uh, add a little bit more color do it do it gently to start with and gradually increase your pressure yeah get a bit it more makes a difference to that yeah but it makes it a bit more three-dimensional doesn't it that's right that's right yeah okay good thanks wendy for sending in the picture um she also sent in a picture of her dog sam um just saying here um long bit long email there but um she wondered if you could do it as a lesson this picture here that we've got mm -hmm. in the top right um obviously she'd love to do it um but i thought i thought that we'd include that uh, yeah. and the reasons why we can't actually do that picture do you want to elaborate yes i will well, well the reason is to do a picture at all i have to consider two or three things first of all i have to consider is it a picture that uh, everybody would like to do you know is it a, a a, a subject now i know wendy would like to do it and i'm sure there's lots of people saying oh no i'd like to do that but across the board you have to be careful that you want a picture that is going to be universally accepted mm. the second thing is the photography side of this is critically important now that's not a bad picture i've got to say but it's not a great picture not fo photograph wise therefore it's going to leave if you look at the nose itself you, you'd have to guess a lot of that nose uh, whereas if it had been professionally photogra photographed, you'd have a little bit more detail to work with. Mm. Now, the other thing is the, you'd have to make slight adjustments to the eye. The eye on the left is larger than the eye on the right. Now, this is not because the dog's odd. It's just the way the photograph's been taken. And so therefore we'd have to make that adjustment now i could do that that wouldn't be a problem i could do that but we're starting to put problems in the way see what i mean yeah and when you start doing that you think ah well now is this worth it so i have to reluctantly uh, decline this as being a picture but however i would say that when you could do it you know the black and white spaniel we have yeah if you go and re refer to those colors they would work very well on that hmm the, the same color tones that I use for that. So get the pencils out and have a go. What I would definitely lose is a bit like the, um, was it uh, when the dog earlier with the ribbons? Yes. And I said, don't do the ribbons. Well, in this case, don't do that collar. Uh, yeah. You lose it. Yeah. It doesn't do anything for the animal. Sometimes a collar does, but that doesn't. So mm. lose the collar. And then, and go down to, just you see where that little uh yeah right at the bottom of that collar you've got that that's it there that's where i would do it to that's it from there across there and fade it out like you've seen me do many many times before mm. and if you do do it bring it up send it to us and we'll have a look at it mm. but you will have a problem with the nose i can tell you that because mm, it's too dark you can't quite see can you, you can't quite make it out no it's 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 uh, one of those things, you know, it might be a lovely, lovely uh, sentimental picture, but from a photography point of view and for copying it would be a challenge. Mm. Good. Well, I, I wanted to include that because there's some good advice there for anyone mm. else that's also thinking of doing the same thing with their pictures and all, all good advice how you would do it.
Yeah, and and don't don't be put put off by what I'm saying, Wendy. You have a go at it. Yeah. Okay, great. Just a couple more then. This is sent by a Aileen. I don't even. That was Eileen. Might be Eileen, but spelled differently. I think Aileen. it's Aileen actually. Aileen. Yeah, I think so. Oh, well, Aileen sent uh, sent the picture of the lovely kitten that she's done. She just signed up to be a member, well um, done. Yeah. and she's done a great job. She said that she's got to get the coloured paper, which is which is fine, um, you know. But she's giving it a go on white pastel paper for the moment. She's also been sending a few emails about getting some pit pastel pencils as well. So she's building up her collection. But just join as a member, I thought I'd, uh, thought I'd, uh, it's good. It's, it's, good. it's lovely to see. This is a very light, airy picture that uh it's not hasn't got the strength of mind but doesn't have to have that does it it, it still has the appeal and if you look at the uh, the peel it's certainly the eyes really really yeah. well done on those eyes the nose leaves quite a bit to be desired there so that's the area that i would say needs to be a little little bit uh, adjusted yeah and uh, as and the pastel pencils the the Faber pastel pencil would be uh, much, much better. The thing is here, because it's light paper, you have a light subject. Now, yeah. Had you had a, a, a sand colour paper, you'd have to work a little bit harder there. Yes. To, to bring the image out. Yeah, that's a good point you there. Kind yeah. of like, it's almost uh, like um, almost a pencil sketch-ish with yeah. a bit of colour in it. Yeah. Just nothing loses. wrong with that. I'm not knocking that. That's that 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 is is good. But what I do like there is put a little bit of background on that. Yeah, well, a little bit of background. Yeah, and yeah. That's matched the eyes. So well done. Uh, no, very good. Um, well done, and I look forward to seeing more. Yeah, keep them coming. So the last one we have just comes from Michelle. Um, she's uh, obviously joined as a member and loving the videos. Um, she's done this picture of a black lab and. Um, she just did, she thought she'd ask your advice on what color for the background. She started the background, thought blue would be a good idea, but then stopped before to put too much pastel Quite on. Right. There's no, the, the blue doesn't work. The reason it doesn't work, it doesn't mix with the color. Now, you don't always have to have a color that is in the picture. Straight away, I'm going to tell you that. But blue doesn't work with it. What I would do there is either take it off, uh, if you can, it's only pastel, so it should should come off okay. I'd put grey on, first of all. I, uh, if um, Michelle hasn't done this already, she may have done, but if she has done it already, then she needs to do it again. Put a, a, a light grey, I would think probably I would use something like 270 light grey on it. That would give you a base colour. Now into that base colour, I would use some of the browns that you see in the eye. Pick out the eye to start with. Uh, and then you can use grey too. Uh, uh, um, some of those eye colours would look good with a, a grey background, a, a mid-grey background too, rubbed in. Mm. What you've got to avoid though, is you see the halo all the whole, whole way around the animal. Yeah. That is not a good idea really. You need to break that halo up. Look at some of my pictures, you'll see how I can do that. Yeah, so that I would certainly do that. But there is one thing I would like to uh, point out to uh, Michelle here. You see, if you look at the, the picture, the photograph, yeah, we've just sliced the top of the ear off on the right. Yes. You see how that's been sliced off? Yes. Now, what's happened is that's, that sliced off bit has transferred itself to the picture. The photograph yeah. in other words the ear on the right needs to be slightly higher yes i see yeah couldn't you put your pointer on it stevie that's it now you need to go up a bit more a bit more right there you are. that's where you need to be okay look at the relationship between now leave that pointer on it steve but look at the relationship between the eye and the, and the top of that point of the arrow. Yeah. Now look at the left eye, or, or on the oh, left I side. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the top of the ear. Now it's not the top of the ear so much; it's the top of the head, because the yeah. ear is slightly up. Yeah. You see right. what I mean? So that needs to come across there. Like that. Yeah. 
Okay. So, because wow. it's slightly out of proportion from the, it's not a problem to do. You can easily do that. What I would suggest you do is to draw that in very lightly with your brown that you've used until you feel that you've got it right. It wouldn't be difficult to do. Mm. Yeah, it, wow. It, you need to do it, though, because it's just taking away. Otherwise, it's a great picture and well done. Yeah, I love the, the sheen that she's got on the, on the hair. Really nice. Yes, very well. You can turn you can turn a good picture, which that is, into a great one if you do what I've said. Mm. Yeah, fantastic. Oh, well done, Michelle. Well done. Good. Well, that's um, that's all the artwork we've got for this time. Loads of pictures sent in. It's great. Lots and well, lots of work being though, done. It, Steve? It, but yeah. This is what we want. So, well done, everybody. Yeah, fantastic. Really fantastic. Okay, great. Well, um. We'll be uh, we'll be back in another couple of weeks. So keep your artwork coming in. Um, if you want to join um, our membership and have the ability to send in your work to us and have it featured on the show, then just go to colinbradleyart.com and uh, click on the sign up or the join page at the top and uh, join any one of our plans. And then you can simply email your artwork to us and we'll feature it on the show. Um, anything else I want to mention? Oh, we'd just like to mention that we're now selling A3 paper, slightly yep. larger A3 on grey, sand colour on grey pastel paper. So you can get that in our shop, uh, also on the website. Uh, that's been going down very well. Uh, you all requested it, so we listened and found it and got it. <laughs> so if there's a demand, then we'll stock it. Well done. Um, and we'll have a new project coming for you in the next week. And uh, so we'll perhaps talk about that next in the next feedback show. We'll, we'll do a little discussion on it. We've just uploaded the bee on the thistle uh, with a little uh, quick demonstration on our YouTube channel as well of how you do the wing, which uh, that's right. Which I like that. I, I, it was some while ago I did that and uh, it brought all the memories back. And I, I enjoyed that picture. I must Lovely. do more. A lovely one for summer as well. Nice, yes, nice. Yes. A lot of people saying it reminds it of summer. Some, uh, them That's of right. summer. It's cool. Yeah. Okay, great. All right. Well, um, we'll leave it there. So, uh, thank you everyone for tuning into the live broadcast and uh, tuning into the replay if you've been watching us back. And that's it for this time. I'm Stephen Bradley. And I'm Colin Bradley. Bye for now. <laughs>